All right, I have done it. I have used an iPad as a development machine. I have done it and committed code and done a lot of ops work. Is it, in fact, a machine that you should rely on? I'm gonna tell you that in just a second. video the other day talking about turning an iPad into a development machine and I talked a little bit about the apps that went into that using Blink Shell and Coda and really honestly I was super excited and super pumped about it at the time because it represented a new a new just a new project a new thing to do uh, I did in fact actually use my iPad this one it's an old iPad Air, the original first generation. I did in fact use it as a development machine for a little while. Um, now, it was not my primary machine. It, it turned out to be too hard to use it as my primary machine. I, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But I was able to do ops work, check in and make sure things are running on the back end, commit code or write code, and then using a backend server to commit code. Um, it was not a terrible or awful experience. It was actually pretty good the times that I was able to use it. I was actually delighted by the fact that it could be so versatile and it could do so many things. But when I was using it, I found some things that were interesting to me. So let's talk about those. So first off, first and foremost, you need a keyboard to make this thing even really palatable as a development machine. You can't use the on-screen keyboard. It just it's not, I mean it's it's not a, a it's not good. It takes up so much of the screen and it really just gets in the way of everything. Um, the other thing is that, you know, when you have the physical keyboard, you get a lot of key commands at your disposal and that actually makes the whole experience better. So for instance, um, command home gets you back to the, or command H gets you back to the home screen. You can alt tab between apps. You can hold command and you can get a whole list of what are the commands that are at your disposal? You can copy and paste, you can do all kinds of things that you would typically do with the keyboard on the iPad. The keyboard support is awesome. It is there, it is 100% baked, and it is ready to use. Now, I saw an interesting tweet from Stephen Trotton Smith the other day that really, really summed up my feelings on using a touch screen to do development work, which is that any device that does not accept a precise pointing mechanism such as a mouse or a trackpad and has a keyboard available is not a true development or usable computer replacement. And I am in 100% agreement. Now, most of the time, having a touchscreen was not really a big deal, and I actually think it's, it's gonna get even better with iOS 12. However, there was one glaring thing that just absolutely stood out as an awful and tr terrible tragedy, which was copy-paste. Copy-paste, when you're trying to highlight a section of text to copy, um, is really just kind of clunky in all modern mobile operating systems. You've got, sometimes you've got the carrot, and so you kind of drag the carrot around. Um, it is really, really tough. And if you want to precisely put your cursor at one specific point, that actually gets a little tedious too. It gets a little challenging. Um, you know, I, I, on this machine, I don't have a force touch. Uh, I don't think any of the iPads have force touch. Um, I don't have a force touch, uh, you know, like on the iPhone 7 and iPhone 6 and whatnot, you just push in and then you can move the cursor around, right? Well, that's not on the iPad. And so copy pasting, moving the cursor to a precise location, doing anything that requires precision with the cursor is really 
just a pain. And to give you an example, um, I use, well, my company uses Slack. I think everybody uses Slack at this point. And I will often make notes to myself in Slack. And some of those notes might be, hey, this is how I was gonna do this, or I need to do this on a daily basis. And it might be um, a console command that I need to type in, right? Run some Ruby script in order to check out some process. And copy pasting from Slack is really just broken. Uh, you don't get the option to copy precise text. You can just copy the entire message or nothing at all. So it would copy, let's say I left a command in there. And a lot of times, you know, when you're using Slack, you use, you use the back tick to kind of like specify something as code. And it would copy the back ticks. And I'd have to go in to my terminal window and remove the back ticks and remove extra, extra text. And it, it's really just not a great experience. So until precise pointing becomes an option with the iPad, that is gonna be one real hurdle to using this as a full-time development machine. Um, as I said in the last uh, video, the only way the, the iPad becomes a full-fledged development environment is through use of two different apps, which were Blink Shell and Coda, which are both fabulous. I mean, really, honestly, they're, they're 20 bucks a piece or 25 bucks a piece. They're not cheap. However, they're worth every bit of money that I spent. Um, I was able to do an incredible amount in them and was super happy with the, I, I, like, it's to the point where, uh, you know, my company is kind of standardized on RubyMine to do our development work. And really, honestly, I want to give Coda a try and see if Coda actually is better on the Mac than, than RubyMine, because I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of RubyMine. But that's, that's a different story. Um, Blink Shell also, fantastic. I mean, really incredible app in terms of having a console, in terms of using, doing shell work on a remote device. But neither one of those apps works very well unless you have a backend that you can remote into. And that is where, you know, you have to have something stood up that acts as kind of like your development environment backend, if you will. Um, if you don't have that, it just doesn't work. You can't, with Coda, you can't commit directly to GitHub. With Blink shell, you can't, I mean, you gotta have a server. To, it's, there's, what's the point of having a shell if you're not gonna have a server that you go into? There's nothing that you're doing on the iPad in Blink shell. Um, to that point, neither, well, especially Blink shell. Blink shell is not a full-fledged um, bash replacement. Uh, if you, because of the fact that it doesn't have a bash profile or a bash RC, um, you can't get a lot of baked in super, you know, super user functions inside of just blink shell without connecting to a machine that has a bash RC or has a bash profile. Uh, similarly, Coda, you know, you could technically write all your code locally on the iPad, but unless you have another server that you're pulling it down from via SFTP, it's really just not there. So that's one thing to keep in mind. In order to make the iPad a development machine, you had to have, you have to have a backend machine that you're going to remote into. One of the things that I ran into, and this is where, you know, at some point I was doing this on a budget and if I had thousands of dollars to spend, maybe it would be easier to do. But I did this on a first generation iPad Air. The experience with, of using the iPad Air day in and day out uh, was not super spectacular. So there were a few things that really just were a problem. Um, in super memory intensive apps, the iPad Air doesn't register touches very quickly. So I would do things like touch in Slack to move to the next channel and I'd just wait. And I'd wait a solid two or three seconds and then it would switch to that channel. And then I'd touch again so that I could move into the, uh, the so I could put my cursor where I could type and that would take a couple seconds. When you have to wait a second or two between touches, it gets really frustrating. 
Um, the other thing is that the iPad Air, the first generation, really just does not have that much RAM. It doesn't support true multitasking. Um, you can kind of pull up the side, the floating side window, but that's not super great. Now, I was able to get into a good rhythm with Coda and Blink Shell where What's great is Blink Shell will pull up into the side column and then you can swipe it away and then you can do all your typing with Coda and then you can bring Blink Shell back and do something on the back end after you've saved it. Um, that was an okay experience, but really if you're going to do this, you have to have a modern iPad, which really brings about a good question. Now, I don't know if this would be super spectacular on, say, the new $329 iPad, but I know it would be pretty decent on one of the iPad Pros. However, once you get to an iPad Pro, you're actually into really nice laptop range. Um, and then you've got to buy peripherals like a keyboard and maybe the Apple Pencil because you do want to do precise touching and the Apple Pencil is the way to do it. Um, it is, it's questionable to me, like you really have to be bought into the iOS or the, the, the Mac, the Apple ecosystem in order to truly make this work. And so if you like, you know, you could get a pretty decent Chromebook for the $650 that you'd spend on a 10 inch iPad Pro. Um, for the price that you'd spend on a fully specced out 12 inch iPad Pro, you could get a just a nice machine, period. Um, you could get one of the, 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 the uh, basement level 13 inch MacBook Pros at that point. So you got to really weigh the question, for a thin client, do I want to spend as much money as it's going to take to get into an iPad Pro? Now, there's some upsides. Portability is super great. Battery life is phenomenal. But, you know, a 13 inch base of the line, base model MacBook Pro is really a nice machine. And once you include all the keyboard and the Apple Pencil and everything else that you need to really fully flesh this thing out, um, you just get more with the MacBook Pro. And so, at the end of the day, I can say yes. You can use an iPad to do development work. It is possible. And it is something that is really honestly in the coming years, I'm going to keep my eye on it. But at the end of the day, the iPad is a thin client. And being a thin client, it is an expensive thin client. There are a lot of other clients out there that you could really spend just, you know, a, a surface, a surface like a Surface would do you just as well almost as the iPad. Um, there's a lot of other options out there. And so once you factor in things like price, I just can't recommend the iPad as a development machine. If you've got an iPad Pro laying around and you wanna do this, go for it. It's fun, it's exciting, it's really enjoyable. However, is this your only device? Is this the one that you're going out to buy? Like, should you spend the money buying a 12 inch iPad Pro and just have that screen or should you buy something that allows you a little bit more flexibility? And the answer is you should buy the something that allows you a little bit more flexibility. I wish I had a different answer. I really wanted to be a believer, but that's where I stand on it. Anyways, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I hope that you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Peace out. Bye.